seated in worship now. So if you guys want to come on in here and just get in a posture of worship. It's going to look a little different today. Obviously, there's just a couple of us up here. So it's going to be just a super sweet and intimate kind of worship today. So if you guys just want to prepare your hearts for that.
song of ages to the early and all who have gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the early your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above Creation cries oh.
continue to sing that name, Yeshua. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, say this, Jesus, you're my beloved. I am yours and you are mine. And we praise you. We love you this morning. We adore you this morning. We worship you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yeshua. 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 Yeshua, 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 Jesus, Jesus, my beloved, you've never left us or forsaken us, you've sent the helper, the comforter to fill us, to guide us, to encourage us, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. Things can be going all kinds of different ways in the world, and you know that they are, right? But he is our strong tower. He is our refuge. He is our shelter. And this is a place we can come, and we can gather, and we can say, Jesus, my beloved, thank you for that rest. Thank you for that rest in you. The peace that passes all understanding, I declare that over you this morning. No matter what's going on out there in the world, Jesus is your shelter, your refuge, and your rest. Thank you, Lord. Isn't God good? Turn to your neighbor and say, God is good. Just don't leave your seat because we know what happens. <laughs> God is so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat this morning. 
Thank you so much, uh, worship team. You guys did awesome. Sure handed. Give them a hand, please. So awesome. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, David. So welcome. Uh, we're so glad you're here. If you're joining us online, we're just so glad you're here this morning uh, to join us in worship. Um, we want to welcome you. If uh, you've never been here before and uh, this uh, maybe is your first time, we'd encourage you to uh, find that little connect card that's in your uh, seat pocket in front of you. It uh, looks like that. You can scan that QR code or fill it out, drop it off in the uh, coffee shop. We have a gift for you. We'd love to connect with you, let you know uh, how much we appreciate you being here. If you're watching online, you can hit that contact us button on our website, and uh, we'll be sure to, uh, to reach out to you and, and uh, pray for you if you have prayer requests or anything like that. Uh, there's also a card in front of you called the Grow Card. It's a green card, and if you want to get more connected here at uh, Livingstone Church, you want to know uh, what groups are going on during the week, how you can serve, uh, how uh, if you want a, a prayer request, that's a great place to go. You can just scan that that QR code there, or go to our website and hit the Grow button on our on our website, and you can get to the same. Uh, place. A um, couple of announcements, uh, announcements this morning. Uh, connect groups are happening. Uh, they are growing and they're, they're strong. And uh, so I'm so happy when uh, connect groups are meeting outside of Sunday mornings. If you haven't connected in a connect group, I, I just encourage you to find a group. We have uh, lots of groups that you can choose from and uh, connect to men's, women's, uh, knife and fork, which is all about the eating. I mean, that's a pretty good group right there. But we also have uh, Life and Rhythm. We also have uh, other connect groups at home. And so just uh, find, uh, find a group and, and get connected uh, this uh, before the summer hits. And uh, yeah, summertime's coming. Uh, one more announcement. And uh, next week, we're going to have an all-church meeting right after the service. About 1145 should be about a 15, 20-minute meeting. Special announcements uh, in that meeting. So uh, and then finally, there are four ways you can give here at Livingstone. We show appreciate uh, you uh, partnering with us and giving to the Lord, and it makes uh, the uh, Sunday gatherings in this facility possible. And so we thank you for that. There are four ways you can give. You can give online. You can give uh, by text. You can give uh, on the mobile app, or you can give in person. We have uh, two boxes in the back. If you came prepared today to give, you can just drop your offering in those boxes. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for uh, this day. What a beautiful day it is. And God, we're, we're so thankful for your mercy, your grace, your loving kindness that follows us all the days of our lives. Father, we just pray uh, over this uh, provision that's coming into the house, God, that you would just bless it, multiply it. Uh, those who can give, God, that you just bless them. Those who can't, God, that you would bless them as well so that they can. So, Father, just, uh, just, uh, we just anoint that giving. We just say, Lord, multiply it in Jesus' name. And, Father, we just give you thanks, and uh, we, we just give you praise this morning. Uh, and everyone said... Amen. So kids, you are dismissed right up through those doors. If you're going to Kids Church, uh, there's an awesome uh, Kids Church happening. Yep, there they go. Said, awesome. So uh, this morning, are you feeling good? Are you ready to worship? What is worship? We're going to find out, I think, in a little bit here. So uh, I want to invite Nate up. Yep. You know him. All right. She knows you. <laughs> So I appreciate this young man. I appreciate that young lady over there, um, and uh, can't wait to hear what God has uh, put on uh, Nathan's heart. And uh, let's just uh, reach your hand out towards him right now. Uh, Father God, we just say, uh, Lord, let your words come forth. Um, Lord, uh, your, words, your word says that your words are uh, unfailing, and they go forth and they accomplish what they are set out to do. So God, we just pray for our hearts. We pray for our minds, Lord, that we would be uh, able to receive what it is that you're, that you're laying down this morning. Uh, and God, that we just thank you for this young man. We thank you for this young couple, uh, Nathan and Sierra. And we just pray a blessing uh, and anointing upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Here you go, sir. Thanks. Love you, Love you man. Um, real quick question. Do you guys have a redeemer? Yeah. You didn't sound too confident. Do you have a redeemer? Yeah. Amen. We have a redeemer. His name is Jesus Christ, and he's wonderful. Um, a, a lot lately, the Lord's been speaking to me through movies. I'm a movie junkie. I love watching movies. It's like what I grew up doing, what Sierra and I love to do when we're just trying to chill out. We love watching movies. I, I absolutely love watching movies. And 
we have been going through all kinds of like different movie series and kind of just browsing around all the action and adventure. And uh, we just wrapped up the Star Wars series. And my goodness, that is such a good series. I love it. And uh, before that, I, I had showed Sierra the Matrix for the first time, and she, it blew her mind. And <laughs> but uh, I love watching movies. And one of the reasons I love just cinema pictures is because I feel like the Lord speaks a lot to me through movies and through these images and things that I see. And um, I couldn't help it. I was watching Star Wars and like, there's just so many of these elements, like you have the force and you have the Jedi and the Sith and there's, there's evil, there's good. And there's this medium that they use the evil and the good through, right? They use the force. They can use it in a good way or a bad way, right? And it can be interpreted as the spirit, like, and there's the savior. Like there's, there's so many themes in all these movies. And I, I always love bringing the Bible and putting it into these movies because it just, it makes it so much more enjoyable for me when I can see the people that I love, like Jesus, like, and I see this redeemer and he's in this movie and there's like this theme of a savior or somebody who's winning a war or winning a battle. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's my God, right? And what's amazing is because he is the redeemer, relevancy is important. Like, we can redeem culture. We can redeem things that don't seem to be extremely biblical or don't seem to be extremely, like, per se, religious, right? Like, things are absolutely redeemable. If he created all things and he is the redeemer, then they are redeemable. Amen? We have a redeemer and he's all over this world in everything. In, in everything. Everything is redeemable. Everything is absolutely redeemable. And I, don't, I just felt this on my heart even before I get into my word. Um, I, I want to encourage you. Redeem something in your life. Don't just find Christ here. Don't just find him in the Bible. Find him in your daily life because he's everywhere. Your daily life is so much more than a nine to five. It's so much more than the tasks that you have to complete. Like it is so redeemable. He's in everything. He's in your school. He's in your business. He's in your business. He's in your business. He's in your job. He's in everything. He is so much around you. And we cannot ignore it. Like, we cannot ignore it anymore. Like, he's there. We have to acknowledge him. He's right there in front of you. Redeem what's going on. Bring him into a conversation. Everything is redeemable. Amen? Sweet. So we're talking today, why worship? Say, why worship? Um, a couple years ago in youth ministry, we did a series and a bunch of us leaders were tasked with different elements that we see in faith and with the question why in front of it. And one of the things I got was why read the Bible, right? And a couple other things were like, why worship? Why Jesus? Why forgiveness? You know, and I really felt the Lord put it on my heart to talk today. Why worship? Why do we worship? Why is it important? Right? Why worship of all things? Why worship? I got a word one time uh, from this amazing young lady. She's a student at Bethel right now. And uh, she was amazing. Uh, she even, um, when she was like 13 years old, she was running around praying for people and um, just prophesying over them. And she came up to me one day and she's like, do you play instruments? And I was like, no, that is the least descriptive thing of me. I do not. If you get those who know me, I tried piano three times. I tried guitar twice. I couldn't pick it up. I just, I couldn't do it. I tried it, right? And I was like, no, that's not really who I am. You know, she's like, I feel like God's going to make you an amazing worship leader. And I was like, great. <laughs> Praise God. You know, it's going to be a miracle. You know, and I walked away from that. And I was like, that was so weird. And over the course of my life, I started to realize what this word actually meant. It had nothing to do with being on a stage and playing a guitar. It had everything to do with my heart. The Lord was calling me to worship out of my life. This is my instrument. This is my instrument. I do play an instrument. This is my instrument. And how I exemplify it, where I take it, that is my worship. And I feel like that thing is for everybody in this room. You are all worship leaders. Your testimony is worship to God. It is worship to him. The way that you live your life, you will be the best Bible that some people read in this world. They'll never pick up that word, but they'll look right into your life. 
They'll look right into your life. They'll look into the actions that you do. They see you. Like, I, I truly believe, like in Hebrews, when it says a cloud of witnesses, not just heavenly witnesses, I think that's earthly witnesses too. There's a cloud of witnesses around you, watching you. What are they going to do? What are they going to do when their life gets shaken up? What are they going to do? Who do they cling to? Right? The world clings to all these different things, but you cling to Christ. And that is your worship. You'll find my answer to be quite cliche if you ask me this question. Why worship? Well, um, truly, I worship God because I was created to. I, I do truly believe that I worship God because he created me to worship him. And in him, I find my ultimate purpose. And it goes full circle, right? Like, it's like, I worship him because I was created to. I find my purpose. Oh, I find my purpose. I want to worship him because I find my purpose. And it's this cycle. I find my purpose in God. I have to worship him. It's, it's the only thing that's ever given me purpose in my entire life is worshiping the Lord, right? I asked a, um, a friend and a, his pastor over at Canyon View, his name's Corey Sondrell, he's an amazing guy. I asked him, I was like, why do you worship Corey? And he told me, he's like, I worship one because he's worthy above all else. Like God is worthy, amen? Amen? <laughs> I worship him because he's worthy. And I also worship because I was created to but I worship him because it's a part of the abundant life. And that part hit me. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Like, it's a part of us finding purpose. Like, worshiping God with our lifestyle is a part of finding purpose here on this earth. It's a part of it. It's absolutely 100% a part of it. it today, if, if you leave, I want you to leave with this one thing. You were one created to worship God, and your worship is action. It's not just what we come and do communally, right? Like, we, we love glorifying God. It's so amazing. Like, we come and vocally glorify God, and we give him praise, right? Andy preached an amazing sermon a couple months ago on praise, and that was, right? We give praise. But what about the worship? The worship's in the praise, right? But worship isn't just community. Worship is lifestyle. Worship is 100% lifestyle. It's our response to God. Here's what's crazy is you have the opportunity to respond to the God of the universe. You have the opportunity, like we don't have to, we could just take the blessing, all right, cool, peace God, you know, right? But you have the opportunity to respond. We get to talk back, we get to glorify him, that's what you're telling me? We get to glorify him? Why are we doing that? Why? Right? It's response plus action. Faith without works is dead, right? It's response plus action. It's us vocally recognizing it, responding, and acting upon it. In the same way, right? I love that verse. Faith without works is dead. I would say worship without action is dead. Worship without action is 100% dead. Because how, how are you going to be the person that's worshiping God but not act on that? How are you going to confess to love God, right, but hate your brother? How are you going to confess to love God, but not walk in his ways? I, <laughs> I was just talking a little bit ago about The Matrix, and it's, it's, it's amazing. I, I love that movie, okay? You guys, if you aren't familiar with The Matrix, it's this Matrix is this movie based on all reality that people have around them. They basically live in a computer, right? And everybody around them is this different program. And to wake up out of the matrix is to wake up into the real world. And the real world's like in this post-apocalyptic state and everybody hates it and it's terrible, right? But they're awake. That's the whole thing of this movie is, it, is ignorance bliss, right? Would you rather stay in the matrix? Or would you rather be awakened to the raw truth? And at the end of this movie, the main character, he's like running and he's running from his life. He's running from what are called agents, right? And there's like programs that try to kill people, but they just look like dudes in suits. And he's running from him and he, and he goes to this door and there's an agent there waiting for him and he shoots him, boom, 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 right? And he, in the movie, you think he dies, right? Because he gets shot and he's laid on the ground. 
But then all of a sudden he stands up and everybody's like, whoa, what's happening? And like this guy Morpheus, he's like, he's beginning to believe, right? And it's a cool part of the, I know this is a weird description. It's a cool part of the movie. But what's so amazing is when he stands up, he's able to see the matrix for the first time for what it actually is. And I believe this is such a perfect picture of salvation. Like we're walking in this life and we think we know what it is. And then we meet Jesus, and he allows us to see the world for what it truly is, for what it actually is. Like, it's no longer we're living in this, like, perception of what we think the world is. We see things for how it actually is. Our response to God through our worship should be gratefulness. Some of my biggest prayers to God are, thank you that you woke me up. Thank you that you awakened me to the truth. Thank you that I get to see the truth for what it really is, that I'm not blinded by this world. Thank you. Thank you that I'm not stuck in this, this cycle that so many people are stuck in, right? There's people who are lost, like deeply lost, and they can't see. They're blinded, blinded 100% by the world. It's my acknowledgement and devotion to God. It's my hope my trust. If you look up a definition of worship, you have, of course, having the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. The acts or right, oh, lost it, hold up. <laughs> adoration or devotion comparable to a religious homage shown towards a person or principle, honor of giving somebody recognition or their merit, right? Right? And it's crazy, as I was reading these definitions, like I just kind of Googled like definition of worship, right? And I, as these all came up, I was like, yeah, that's worship. But my heart was like, it's not, it's not complete. Like it's so much deeper than that. It's so much deeper. Like I'm gonna read a verse here later, but I'm gonna jump to it because it's just so good. Like the love of God, it, it, the steadfast love of God is better than life. Like that's worship. Worship is recognizing he is so good that it's better than your actual life. Like, I would rather sit in his love forever than enjoy myself. It's worth that much. It's that valuable. It's precious. One of the beautiful, most beautiful scriptures I could think of when I think of, oh, that's really tiny, but I'll read it to you, um, is... Uh, John's Revelation, uh, chapter 4, verse 9. And whatever living creatures gave glory, honor, and thanks to the one who is enthroned, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fell face down before him, the one seated on the throne, and they worshiped the one who lives forever and ever. And they, uh, they surrendered their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy our Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, power. For you created all things, and for you, pleasure, they were created and they exist. It is a part of God's pleasure that we exist. It's his pleasure. He's like, I love that you exist. Jeannie, I love that you exist. That's how God's, Paul, I love that you, Alan, I love that you exist. God loves that he created you. He absolutely adores you. He thinks you're amazing. He does. Is that not worth giving glory back? Is, is he not worth giving it back? The God of the universe created, has created 7 billion people at this moment, right? And he thinks you're amazing. You specifically. He calls you Nathan Howard. I love you. Isn't that crazy? Is that not worth giving something back? I love this scripture because it talks about the 24 elders face down, face down in worship. Not face down just in praise, but in worship, glory and honor. There was this one time uh, two or three years ago at youth camp, we had a, uh, an amazing worship set and it wasn't just because the music was amazing or the message was on point or whatever, but it was because glory showed up. True glory. 
And I've, I've experienced it a few times in my life, but it was powerful. And the best way I could explain it, leaders, students, people on the worship team, the pastor, everybody, sound guy. The sound guy was face down. That's when you know it's good is when the sound guy's face down, okay? That's how you know the worship's good. But literally, everybody in this room, face down, worshiping God. There's nothing else I could do. There's not, I can't get lower. I can't exalt him. Do you know what it means to exalt God? It means to get low. The best way we can exalt God is from a lower place. The lower we get, the more he exalts. Everybody face down in the room, exalting God. True worship is not just saying you love Jesus, but showing it, exemplifying it, living your life like you do, like you worship him. Worship is also obedience. It's obedience out of adoration, out of loving God, out of knowing him. You're like, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be obedient. I love you. And you know what's crazy? You'll find more often than not where your hope lies, there your worship and devotion lie too. And you often love and enjoy what you worship, right? I like to think in God, I put my hope, right? Right? He gave me family. He gave me future identity. He's given me everything. I have to put my hope in him, right? Let's go to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. This is the Amplified. Do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and their thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart is, your wishes, your desires, that which, you, that which your life centers will also be. You know, it's absolutely crazy. If you are putting your faith or trust into the systems of this world, it will absolutely fail you. But still, we worship it. We worship this world. We absolutely worship our phones. How many of you got a phone? Raise your hand. You know that your phone tells you how many minutes and hours a day you're on it? It has a record. One day I looked at it, I was like, I was curious, 12. How did I get to 12? How does that happen? I'm not even awake that long. It must have been an error or something, right? But I think the average, they say, is about four to five hours. Four to five hours is the average crazy. Could you imagine if you worshiped God for four to five hours a day? Could you imagine? What, what would happen? <laughs> what would happen if we worshiped God? It didn't just have to be praise. What if we were just talking about God for four to five hours a day? What if we were just dwelling on his goodness for four to five hours a day? That's worship. What if we were just obedient for four to five hours a day? Four to five hours a day. It doesn't just stop at the cell phone. We worship our families. We worship our careers. We worship our cars. Humans are amazing. We'll worship anything that does, uh, helps us live life easier. We'll worship it. Hulu, Netflix, Disney Plus. We'll worship it. Oh, it gives me pleasure. It makes me comfortable. Yeah, I'll worship that. And it's crazy, you know when you worship something is when that thing is taken away, there's a spiritual fit that happens. Something goes on, right? Oh, I need, my, I need my cell phone. You can't take my cell phone. You can't take my streaming service. You are worshiping what God created. He created you so beautiful, yet you're like, oh, I'm gonna worship your creation instead, Lord. We're gonna worship the creation over the creator? People literally pray to trees, man. It's true. People want to be so in line with nature, right? They're like, dude, you know who created that thing? He's worthy of that more than that tree, more than that rock, the crystals you're praying to. I heard this rapper one time. He was like, you can keep your crystals. I like prayer that actually works. I was like, mm, that's good. <laughs> but seriously, like people will pray to this creation more than they pray to the creator. They'll recognize, give glory, honor, 
they'll exalt it long before they exalt God. It's actually supposed to be in reverse. Worship is supposed to be rebellious to popular belief. Worship is rebellious. Say amen. Amen. Worship is rebellious. (laughs) It should be. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were being obedient to God, they were doing what? Being rebellious to the king. When Joshua marched in protest in God's name around Jericho, he was being obedient, but he was being rebellious to Jericho. When Elijah was one of the only people left faithful to the Lord, being obedient, right? The prophet Elijah. He's being obedient. Everybody else wanted him dead. Everybody wanted him dead until he proved, right? Jesus Christ was sent for purpose and sin no longer separated us from the Father. But man, he ticked this world off. Worship is rebellious. Worship is 100% rebellious in counterculture. You will find yourself in places doing exactly the opposite of what culture says you should be doing, but you are honoring God through it. And it is so worth it. There's, there's this crazy, it's, it's demonic, but um, there's this thing, like I heard this uh, chick say one time to a friend of mine, and she said, uh, <laughs> we need to pray for her. <laughs> she said, um, I can't believe that you wouldn't, uh, what did she say? One second, give me a second. Um, I can't believe you wouldn't sleep with somebody before you date them. Don't you want to test drive a car before you own it? And I was shocked. I was like, oh my goodness, that's crazy. But you know what's, you know what's crazy here is the rebellious worship of obedience, purity right? Obedience will make the world look astonished at you, but will make God smile. Don't you want to make God smile? (laughs) I can't imagine how good it's going to be when that one day when you're face to face. You know, that song I can only imagine, right? I can only imagine what it will feel like when God's just there smiling at you. He's like, good job. Good job. You were obedient. Because obedience, it goes on. Like, <sighs> these, these moments of opportunity that we have to give into the world, right? To, to play into its games, they come and go. But obedience goes on forever. Worship goes on forever. Worship isn't just in this life, it's in the next. Obedience is in the next. It supersedes man's understanding. Man cannot comprehend what's going on. The world cannot comprehend what's going on. All you need to know is your obedience and your worship to God is some of the most important things of your walk. Ever. It will be the most important thing. You walking out what God's called you to do, so much more important than what people will tell you is wise. Oh, brother, I don't think that's wise. Well, guess what? You didn't create me. You didn't redeem me. So I don't care. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Come on. Why are we going to let the opinion of the world sway us? Why are we going to let the opinion of man outweigh the opinion of God? okay. I'm missing a verse, but that's all right. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. It's so amazing to think that God has put eternity in our hearts. I love this in the Amplified, too. It says, he has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time, And he has also planted eternity or a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. 
I'm going to repeat that. A mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find slash comprehend grasp what God has done overall his plan from the beginning to the end. God purposely put us inside of us a desire to seek out purpose. He, he did that on purpose. He gave every single one of you a desire to find out who you are so that it would lead you to him. So that at the end of striving, at the end of seeking, you go, oh, it comes right back to the cross. Whoa. You know, I was talking about everything being redeemable in the beginning. You were redeemable. God was like, you know what? You're so redeemable. I'm going to give a sense of eternity inside of you. I'm going to give you a sense for purpose. And you're going to come back around and find me. That's how redeemable you are. God knew we would defer, but he knew you would come back. He knew it. That's worthy of worship. I don't, I don't get this. People, uh, you know, I love, I love people, but why people have to understand God before they come in humility to worship him? It's crazy. They need, they need a math equation. They need to know why. You don't need to know why. You can't fathom a God. You can't. You can't fathom God. You, you want to try and fathom God? Explain grace to me. And then, then continue to go search out your purpose and find out who God is. When you can truly explain grace to me, go, go tell me how you're going to find God next. Like, that's, that's where you should start. If you really want to find out who God is, you want to know him, and then once you have enough evidence, you'll serve him, explain grace. Explain it. You can't. You can't explain it because you can't fathom it. You can't fathom it because you're full of sin. You've come from sin. You can't fathom grace. To fathom grace, you have to come from purity. You have to be pure to be able to fathom grace. We worship God because we can't. We can't. We don't understand. We don't know why he decided to love us. Why he created us knowing we would come down this road. And yet he still loved us. If you're a person who struggles with, you need the logistics to serve God. Man, I, I want to pray for you. Like, let's meet after service. I'll pray for you. But like truly, like you do not need to fathom him. You need to know that he loves you. That's so much more important than proving his existence what would you what would you rather do i don't know go years on end trying to prove who god is or just receive what he's giving you it both will lead you to the same place if you if you truly want to seek out god go for that but like i said it'll all bring you back around to the cross all roads lead to the cross I just, I don't get it. Men have died in his presence and you want an explanation. <laughs> I just, he's, he's so much bigger than we realize. He's so much bigger. Because of that, he's absolutely worthy of our devotion and praise. Absolutely. <laughs> mm. Psalms 63, 1 through 4. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As a dry and weary land where there is no water, so I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory because of your steadfast love is because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift my hands. God is better than life. He's better than anything that this life could give you. He's better than any pleasure you can find. And we should get to this place where we are praying to the Lord, where we're worshiping the Lord and going, God, I'm going to serve you because your love is better than my own life. Better than my own life. 
I've been completely redeemed, but God's still better than my life. I got a dream job. I got the best house, whatever. God is still better than my life. I got kids. I have a family. I'm, I'm so successful and I'm rich in, in this idea that I have a family. God is still better than my life. I got the most perfect relationship. My wife is beautiful. God is still better than my life. His love is worth more than my life. His love is amazing. His love is so amazing. I will praise him because his love is amazing. Is he amazing? We should have this heart. This, this verse is beautiful. I love this verse. This should be our heart. God, I, I, my flesh faints for you. My soul thirsts for you, God. I need you. You're better than my own life. You're better than my own opportunities, God. You're better than me. You know better than I do. He's everything we need, everything we want. Jesus is everything. He's everything. He's my everything. He is absolutely my everything. I'll tell you that confidently right here, right now. He is absolutely my everything. And I pray he's absolutely everything to you. I pray that your life of worship reflects that Jesus is your everything. I pray that I come off that way. I know sometimes I don't. I got humbled a couple weeks ago. I don't always come off like a lover of Jesus. I don't. But truly, this is my heart. That I will love him like this that I'll, my flesh will faint for him. Isn't that, that wording is amazing. My flesh faints for you. You understand that? My sin falls off and dies for you. My soul thirsts for you like it's never had a drink before. There is a revelation in this scripture and a knowing, a, a, a knowing of God that's so deep. It's so deep. Like this is an example of worship coming from a place that's so deep. The only way we can repay salvation is through adoration. It's the only way. It's, it's, it's amazing, right? Created so no man may boast. So none of us could say, oh, we got it. See that? Salvation. <laughs> So no man may boast, but boast in Christ alone. He did it. Not me. He did it. He set me free. He saved me. He did it. I didn't do anything. All I did was say yes and respond to that little Craigslist ad, you know? <laughs> All I did was be obedient. And he did the rest. He did the heavy lifting. When we are obedient with worship, right? When we are obedient to Christ, he does the heavy lifting. He does it. We're, we're weak. He knows we're weak. He, and yet he still loves us. He knows we're weak. He's ready to take that burden though. I'm gonna tell you something. Worship is really hard when you have idols. Worship is extremely hard when there's an assault on your attention, you're trying to look at God, but things are pulling you left and right. Worship is extremely hard when idols are pulling you left and right. But the burden becomes easy when it's no longer about us, when it's no longer about me. The burden of worship becomes lighter when you're seeking his face and not just seeking his hand the burden becomes actually weightless when we worship him because of his kindness and goodness. His overwhelming kindness and goodness. It's, un, it's not even fathomable. It's not. So we, we've come to this place where we're like, I, I will never understand it, but I have to respond. Church, how are you gonna respond? How are you responding now? I, we were in a men's group this week and somebody said something that just knocked my head over. Like, I was like, whoa. Like, he was talking, he said he was praying to the Lord and um, 
Or no, he was with a friend. His friend asked him, hey, are you as on fire as you were when you were a younger man? Are we as on fire as we were when we were in our youth? Our first, you remember the first time you fell in love with Jesus, that salvation week, man? Oh, you're telling everybody it was exciting. It was, so, but are we still on fire like that? Are we still worshiping God like that? Amen. Good for you. God bless you, Josiah. I just bless that man right there. <laughs> well, good. I pray that you are. I pray that when you found that first love, that worship that was coming out of you, I pray that it's still going on in your life. That's how we need to be. That's how we need to be. We can't get old spiritually, man. We can't get tired spiritually. We got to stay on fire. We have to. There's a world dying out there. It needs life. <laughs> Sometimes worship isn't just coming in here, right? It's, it's not just being obedient. Worship is also expression. Worship is expression. When, when you're out there, you're among coworkers, you're among friends, you're among people, express it. You feel the pressure of it. I, I felt the pressure of it. Man, do I share Jesus right now? Do I, do I bring up a conversation? What do I do? Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. It's that easy. Just do it. Talk about him like he saved your life, like he set you free. He's not just a trophy you sit on the shelf. Oh, I won the war that time. Yeah, that was pretty good. No, he's our life. He's literally what feels our life. This verse, right? My soul thirsts for you. I am literally living off of the refreshment of Christ. I'm living off of that. Let's jump into this next verse real quick. Micah 6, 6 through 8. Real quick. Um, if, if, if you feel like you need a three steps to a better life, I would, I would check out this verse. Uh, With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old or uh, will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams and uh, where 10,000 rivers of oil shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? Micah's asking the Lord, what, what would please God? What, how can I worship you? What would please God? The fruit of my body or the sin of my soul? He said, I told, he has told you, oh man, what is good and what the Lord does require of you, but to, to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Three things. Seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly. Seek justice. See out that the righteousness would happen in your life. That justice would embody you. That righteousness would embody you. That you seek it out daily. Seek out righteousness daily. Kill yourself daily. Kill the flesh daily. Kill the desires of the heart daily. Seek out justice. Love mercy. Oh man, get obsessed with the grace of God. Get absolutely obsessed with his grace. Get obsessed with it. Absolutely. And walk humbly with your God. Don't get ahead of him. Don't get behind him. But walk humbly with God knowing that he'll lead the way. Here's what a good picture of walking humbly with God looks like. Allowing God to have about two or three steps ahead of you. And you're not so far behind that you're being disobedient or you're not running ahead to where you're psyching yourself out, but you're just kindly walking behind him. Okay, Lord, lead me. All right, we're gonna go into this group. We're gonna see these people. Okay, let the Lord lead you a few steps ahead. That's how you walk humbly with God. I love this verse in Micah, not because of just this section, but because of what I'm going to read next. But Micah didn't want just gifts or oh, just random worship from him. Micah's trying to, oh God, I want to, I want to strive. I want to worship you. I want to do this, God. What do you want? Do you want oil? Do you want the rams? Do you, what, what should I bring to you, God? What should I bring to you? And I feel like we look like this sometimes. 
where, God, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? You know, and he's like just trying to give you a simple revelation. You know, what's crazy is like the sacrifices that Michael would have brought to the Lord. They would have been amazing. They would have been awesome, but it would have come and gone. This thing that he told him to do will be taken on for the rest of his life. So he was like, God, how could I do something right now to make you happy? He's like, how about you love me for the rest of my life or the rest of your life? How about you serve me? How about I give you these three tasks and it's going to be hard and you probably won't complete them, but you can try the rest of your life. I want to encourage us. There is things that God is ready to release to us, ready to speak on your heart. But we get so anxious wondering if we're giving him enough, wondering if we're spending enough time with him. We completely miss it. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry I didn't read my Bible this morning. So, you know, what can I do? Can I, uh, can I just, uh, uh, can I ask for forgiveness for this, this, this? Like, slow down. Every day is not about this religious cycle thing that we're supposed to be doing. Where is the Lord leading you in your day? Where does he want you to worship him? What does he want you to do? I had this... Weird thing happened to me one time where I was, had this same thing. I was anxious. I was like, God, I'm not reading my Bible, and I feel like I'm not doing enough for you. And he told me what I told you in the beginning. Find me in everyday life. Find me. And it just it shook me up, and it, it makes me emotional right now, the way that I'm thinking about it. But when you find the Lord daily, sometimes it's better revelation than what you get from that sometimes it's deeper than, than the prayer. When you find him in your day, when you find him, he's all around. But we're so busy getting all crazy. We're like, oh, well, I just need to, I need to serve God. I need to find opportunities to serve him. He's all around you. Let him lead you. He is all around you. Micah 7, 1 through 7. Woe is me, for I have become as when a summer fruit has been gathered and when the grapes have been gleaned, there is no cluster to eat, no first ripe fig my soul desires. The godly has perished from the earth and there is no one upright among my, mankind and they all lie and wait from blood and each hurts one another with a net. So what he's explaining is there's, there's not very many godly people left, right? And he's very saddened by this. And this is next chapter over. Their hands are on what is evil to do it well. The prince and the judge ask for a bribe and the great man utters an evil desire from his soul. Thus they weave it together. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright of them of the thorn hedge. And the day of your watchman, of your punishment has come. Now their confusion is at hand. Put no trust in a neighbor. Have no confidence in a friend. Guard the doors of your mouth from her, from her who lies in your arms. For the son treats the father with contempt and the daughter rises up against her mother and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. And the man's enemies are the men of his own house. But as for me, I will look to the Lord and I will wait for the God of my salvation and my God will hear me. I want to ask you a very important question. Will you worship him to the end? You will find that people will walk away from God. People will walk away from Jesus. They'll stop believing They'll think he was never there. They'll think it was emotionalism. They'll think it was everything. But will you remain? This is very serious. Will you remain? People will do evil things. They will walk away from God. But will you remain? I think what's so special about this, if Micah hadn't received this revelation to seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly, he would have been among the people who could have potentially walked away from God. And here he is. Almost everybody's corrupt. Everybody's walking away from the Lord. And he's like, no, I won't bend. I will worship him. We need to be people who at the very end 
at the most heart-wrenching experience, at the most, at the biggest tragedy, we're like, no, he's still my God. His kindness is what won me over. He's still God. I will stand. I will remain. I won't be overturned. I won't, I won't be swayed by opinion. My revelation is too deep. My love for God is too deep. I will not be swayed. Worship isn't just a momentarily, momentary thing. It's a lifelong commitment. Worship will be a lifelong commitment. And I know it's a lot to think about, but he is so worthy of it. There's the weight of thinking, okay, yeah, we're gonna have to worship him for the rest of our life and do right, and right? That's, that's the reality of it. We're gonna do it, amen? But the joy part of it is so worth it. Like the joy of the Lord is our strength. The restoration the actual satisfaction, the refreshment of Christ is so worth my worship. I love that, uh, I think it's a Proverbs, you will be refreshed because you refresh others. I want to encourage you, you will be refreshed as long as you continue to be passionate and refresh others. There will always be something new that God has for you. And even if you feel like he hasn't released anything in a long time, keep seeking him out. Keep worshiping him. Don't just worship because you get. Worship because there's a promise. Worship because he wants to release things to you. Worship because his kindness won you over. Romans 2.4 is one of my favorite verses. It was the kindness of God. It wasn't, it wasn't anything else. That led me to Jesus. It was his kindness. It was the kindness of God. That alone is worth worship. Worship team, go ahead and come on up. So why do we worship? We worship because we get to respond to God. And that's amazing. The actual opportunity we have to retort back to God how we feel is amazing. We worship out of obedience. We walk in the straight and narrow. We're different. We're counterculture, man. We walk that straight and narrow because it is our worship. To be a pure bride is our worship. To be pure among an evil world, a wicked generation, is our worship. We worship because God deserves our adoration. He 100% deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves your worship. He did what no man could do. He did what the law couldn't fulfill. He deserves your worship. And finally, we worship God because it's a part of our divine purpose. If you want to find out what you're called to be, who you're made to be, start with worship. Start with it. Start with just worshiping God, and it will all come together. Oh, that pad came on. Now it's extra holy. <laughs> what happens? What makes all things come together when we seek what? His righteousness and start with worship I'd encourage you start with worship I feel like everybody's looking for purpose young and old doesn't matter our age we're all looking for purpose we are start with worship and see where it takes you and it doesn't just have to be you singing a song or you getting on your knees before the Lord be obedient love your neighbor tithe amen <laughs> seriously though be obedient start with worship and it will lead you to that divine purpose all things come with it uh, we're gonna continue worshiping with communion so uh, go ahead uh, who does the communion? <laughs> Marsha and your team, go ahead and uh, 
get that ready. Um, what we're gonna do for communion is, I want you guys to have a real opportunity to remember because remembering is worship as well. Jesus said to do this in remembrance of him. It's a part of our worship to remember the sacrifice of Christ. They're getting stuff ready over there. But um, what you're gonna do is we're gonna get two lines going down here, down the aisles. Um, but when you get your elements, I want you to sit and I want to wait until everybody has theirs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to create a real holy moment between you and God. I feel like a lot of times we get into the pattern or the actual rhythm of doing communion. It's like, okay, yeah, blood, you know, body. Um, but I really want us to cherish this moment, to remember what has God done for you? What did he take you out of? What did he set you free from? That is so important. It is important to remember. It's important to remember where you came from. You know, we're not supposed to dwell on the old life, but we're supposed to stand victorious and praise God because of it. Amen? Okay, go ahead and uh, come get your stuffs. <laughs> Just file in a line. Try to make the line go one direction. <laughs> So at the Last Supper, Jesus taught his disciples this act of communion, to do this in remembrance of him, to remember that his body was broken and his blood was shed for us, for the sins of the world. And I think this is so amazing because at the time, two of the most common things at the table were bread and wine. So it wasn't just like Jesus was saying, hey, come together every now and then and remember my sacrifice. He was like, hey, actually, every time you sit at your table and you're drinking wine or you're, you're taking the bread, remember me. You know, I, I think oftentimes it becomes way too a habit when the little communion cups come out and the bread gets broken. Oh, that's when we got to remember. I'd encourage you, find some time in your week outside, when it's, or outside of church when it's just you. And remember his sacrifice, what his blood did for you. What we're gonna do is, we're, we're not gonna take it together. I want you to take it on your own, but I want you to take it in your own time. 
So Sierra's gonna go back into worship. And we're gonna start worshiping and you can feel free to stand, you can sit, you can be face down. I, I'm not, I don't care. But I want you to take your communion in remembrance by yourself. One, because I, this, I want this to be a moment between you and God, but I want us to get out of the pattern of just doing it because we're doing it. I want us to remember what did God set us free from? What did he take you out of? How did he cleanse you? What, what new name has he given you? Remember this. And before you take your communion, I want you to just, in your heart or out loud, just say, thank you, Jesus, for being my redeemer. Just say that in your head or whatever. Whenever you're ready to take yours, go ahead. In your Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being my redeemer. Anytime in the worship you feel, if you feel like you have to wait all the way to the end, no judgment. Whenever you need to take it. But we're going to jump back into this song. And let this be worship. Let us remember let us praise his name. Sing out loud. <laughs> Declare your victory. We're in victory, amen? We're in victory. We are in victory. Let's worship like we are.
feel like the Lord just also reminded me something that I just so easily forgot. Worship is our weapon against the enemy. <laughs> it's our weapon. It's how we stomp on the devil. <laughs> Worship is your weapon. If you feel like you are going through something, if you're facing a trial right now, there is nothing that the enemy would hate more than for you to glorify God. Worship is our weapon. Amen. So we got uh, people who will be up in the front. If you need prayer for anything, I encourage you to come down. We do believe in healing. We do believe our God is an amazing miracle worker. And we do believe prayer is powerful and that it works. Amen? <laughs> cool. Um, other than that, you're excused. Thank you for joining us this Sunday. We love you very much. And remember why you worship. Throughout your week, remember why you worship. And what weapon God has given you when the enemy tries to throw stones at you. You throw his name back in its face. Let's pray us out. And then uh, we're going to have people up here in the front if you do need prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much that you created us with delight. That you took delight in your creation. That you looked down on us and you went, yeah, that's mine. God, I pray that we would learn and be, that you would teach us, God how to worship you effectively, how to worship you with not just random open sacrifices, Lord, but intense, lifelong commitment. God, I pray that you would be God, I pray that you would be such a, a redeemer, a healer, a powerful director, in people's lives. Everybody in this room, God, I pray that you would be such a powerful force in their life. They would, all they could do is give you adoration. <laughs> all they could do is glorify your name. All they could do is lift you up. And uh, Lord, I, I just bless today. I thank you for this opportunity that you gave me, Lord, to speak your word. And God, I pray that we would also just be a church that's just passionate about you. Lord, make us so passionate about you. Let us not get numb in our daily week, God, but let us be so passionate for what you're doing. Actually, I just, I have this image in my, I feel like we're supposed to pray for each other. So if you're comfortable with it, and you know what? If you're not, stretch your legs a little bit. Um, we're gonna pray for each other. If you're next to somebody, I just want you to ask them if they need prayer for anything. And I want you to lay hands on each other and just believe that God would do a miracle. Believe that he would do something powerful and pray for each other. So just the person next to you, or if you're by yourself, find somebody who's also by themselves and pray for each other. Let's do that. I, I really feel that. Like, I, I feel like this is such an intimate moment that we should take advantage of this. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Just pray for each other. Believe that God would do a miracle in their life. And, uh, yeah. And if you do need some more prayer, come on up and we'll pray for you. <laughs> Love you guys. Take care.
Senor Rey.